Jacob Willems van Veen had lived a long and hard life. He had been a farmer, a merchant, a soldier, and a father. He had seen wars, famines, plagues, and revolutions. He had lost his wife, his friends, and some of his children. He had grown old, weary, and stern. He had few joys left in his life, except for his son, Martin. Martin was his youngest son, and his pride and joy. He had inherited his mother's beauty and his father's intelligence. He had a passion for art, and a talent for painting. He had learned from the best masters in Harlem, and had developed his own style and vision. He had painted many works, some for churches, some for patrons, and some for himself. He had painted landscapes, portraits, and scenes from mythology and history. He had painted his father, several times, in different poses and moods. But Martin was not satisfied with his achievements. He wanted to see more of the world, and to learn from the great artists of the past and the present. He wanted to go to Italy, the cradle of the Renaissance, and to visit Rome, Florence, Venice, and Naples. He wanted to see the works of Michelangelo, Raphael, Leonardo, and Titian. He wanted to paint the wonders of nature, the monuments of antiquity, and the people of different cultures. He had saved enough money to make his dream come true, and he had prepared to leave his hometown for an extended trip to Italy. He had packed his belongings, his tools, and his sketches. He had said goodbye to his friends, his colleagues, and his clients. He had only one thing left to do, to say goodbye to his father. He went to his father's house, where he had grown up, and where he had painted his first pictures. He found his father sitting in his favorite chair, by the window, looking at the fields and the sky. He greeted him warmly, and told him about his plans. He asked him for his blessing, and his advice. His father listened to him quietly, and nodded. He was proud of his son, and happy for his success. He was also sad, and worried. He knew that he might never see his son again, and that he might die alone. He knew that his son would face many dangers, and many temptations. He knew that his son would change, and maybe forget him. He wanted to say all these things to his son, but he could not. He was not good with words, and he did not want to show his emotions. He was a stern man, who had learned to hide his feelings. He decided to do something else, something that would express his love, and his farewell. He asked his son to paint him one last time, as a souvenir, and as a testament. He asked him to paint him as he was, an old man, nearing the end of his life. He asked him to paint him with honesty, and with respect. Martin agreed, and set up his easel and his canvas. He looked at his father, and saw him as he had never seen him before. He saw the wrinkles on his face, the grey in his hair, the weariness in his eyes. He saw the strength in his jaw, the dignity in his posture, the wisdom in his brow. He saw the history in his features, the stories in his scars, the memories in his gaze. He saw his father, and he loved him. He painted him with skill, and with care. He painted him in three-quarter view, wearing a black coat and hat. He painted him against a dark background, with a hint of light. He painted him with a direct gaze, that confronted the viewer with his presence. He painted him with a nuanced palette, a compositional complexity, and a deft handling of details. He painted him with naturalist precision, and imaginative flair. He painted him as a masterpiece. He finished the painting in a few hours, and showed it to his father. His father looked at the painting, and saw himself as he had never seen himself before. He saw his life, his achievements, his failures, his joys, his sorrows. He saw his son, and he thanked him. He asked his son to write something on the parapet, something that would identify him and his son. He asked him to write it in Dutch, their native language, and to write it in his voice. He asked him to write it as a statement, and as a question. Martin wrote what his father asked him to write. He wrote, My son portrayed me here when I had lived 75 years, so they say. He wrote it as a statement that declared his identity and his age. He wrote it as a question that wondered about his existence and his legacy. He signed his name and the date on the bottom right corner of the painting. He packed his painting and his things and prepared to leave. He hugged his father and kissed him on the cheek. He told him that he loved him and that he would write to him. 
he told him that he would come back and that he would see him again. He left his father's house and boarded a ship to Italy. He embarked on his journey and on his adventure. He saw many things and painted many things. He learned many things and changed many things. He became a great artist and a famous artist. He never forgot his father and his father never forgot him. Several years later, Jacob died at the age of 79, while Martin was still abroad. He died peacefully, in his bed, surrounded by his family and his friends. He left behind his farm, his business, his possessions, and his memories. He also left behind his portrait, his souvenir, and his testament. He left behind his son, his pride, and his joy. The portrait was inherited by Martin, who returned to Harlem after his travels. He kept the portrait in his studio, where he painted many more works. He looked at the portrait often, and remembered his father. He admired his father's image, and his father's words. He cherished his father's love, and his father's farewell. The portrait was passed down through the generations, and became a family heirloom. It was also recognized as an icon of Dutch painting, and a masterpiece of art. It was admired by many people, and exhibited in many places. It was praised for its realism, its expression, its composition, and its style. It was studied for its meaning, its message, its context, and its significance. The portrait is still alive, and still speaks. It speaks in the sitter's voice, and in the painter's voice. It speaks to the viewer, and to the world. It speaks of a father, and a son. It speaks of a life, and a death. It speaks of a love, and a farewell. It speaks of a portrait, and a story, 